Pause mode is my friend. Repeat with me. Pause mode is my friend. Hello everyone, Phoenixo here and welcome to another video of a multi-part series in which I'm gonna show you the whole process that brought me from the default cube till the animation you just saw. In this video we are gonna talk about the basic of animating in Blender. As for sculpting I suppose there is not an easy way to show the animation process step by step in a 10 to 20 minutes video. It takes hours, even to animate a few seconds clip. I'm gonna do my best to share the key points of the process I follow. Let's start building the environment in which Phoenix is gonna move. I created a simple geometry that, spoiler alert, I'm gonna even change later. I'm placing the camera in a position that will never change through the entire animation. And I'm changing the focal length to 70mm. I think that's the best lens for this purpose considering I don't want huge distortions. When you are happy with the camera position and with the framing, be sure to be in the frame 1. With the camera selected and with the mouse within the viewport, press I on your keyboard to insert a keyframe. A keyframe is basically the way you freeze that pose or position for that specific bone or object. As I don't want to move the camera, I'm locking its movement by clicking the lock button in the timeline. When in doubt, choose location, rotation and scale. In this way you are simply saying that in that frame the camera will be in that position with that rotation and with that scale. To keep the workspace organized I'm creating a new collection for the environment in which I'm gonna put the geometry and the text logo. Add a text object and choose the font. I'm aligning the text to the center and renaming the object. In object mode, right click the object and click to convert to mesh. Now you can extrude it, rotate it and place it where you want. I simply shaded the environment and the logo with a dark black color and a noisy texture for the roughness and the normal map. Nothing fancy, just to get a few more details from them. Once you are happy with the environment, you can jump into a new panel, the animation panel. I like to basically keep the default one. I like to increase the pass part out opacity value till 1 in the camera properties menu. Doing so in the viewport, if you are in camera view, nothing but the frame will be shown. At this point it's time to start animating. In my case it's gonna be one long clip of something about 400 frames. Select the armature and jump in the post mode, that will be your friend for many hours to come. I think that the best way to proceed is by step. In the first step just block out the animation. Choose the frame, move the global root control in the right place and insert a keyframe to freeze its pose. Change the frame and repeat, and do it as many times as you need for your animation. Enabling auto keyframe may help you gaining some time, but be careful, as for every bone you move, a keyframe is created for you, and if you get distracted, may end in adding more keyframes than needed. Every keyframe you insert is related to an action, in my case, is the one named Rig Action, that I'm gonna rename in a few seconds. Be sure to not have unwanted keyframes, inserted by mistake. 
by right-clicking on one keyframe in the Action Editor, you can choose the Interpolation Mode. It means that you can choose the way the selected pose will be transformed in the next one. Most of the time, you will leave it as a Bezier, in which Blender will calculate for you, for each frame in between, the better pose. Instead, if you choose the constant interpolation, there will be no in-between poses. The starting pose, in fact, will be shown till a new keyframe with a new pose arrives. Most of the time, at least for my laptop, in Blender I can play the animation with the right timing, because of the huge amount of calculation power that is needed. For this reason, another important option you should know about is that you can render the viewport animation. If you are in Solid Viewport Shading tab, it should not take so much time to render. I think it's necessary to render the animation or part of it once in a while. In this way you can check the timing and other details you can't get in the viewport. To render the viewport animation, I usually set the output path and I render it as a series of images. Once the render is completed, I import them in a video editing program so I can check them as a video. Once you complete the blocking out phase, you can start thinking about animating other control bones. And it's gonna take time. Always try to go from a macro animation point of view to a detailed one. In my case, I tried at first to add a few poses to the more visible bones, for the first few frames. Then, step by step, I started posing the shoulders, the paws, the claws, the wings, and only after a few steps, I started detailing the feathers and the eyes. And it's gonna be always a trial and error. Don't forget to render the viewport once in a while and change the timeline according to what you don't like. You can modify the keyframes in your timeline with most of the shortcuts you usually use for modeling. You can grab and scale them around. Check also the possibilities that breakdown keyframes may give you. Basically, between two keyframes you can add a breakdown keyframe pressing Shift and E on your keyboard. By moving the mouse from left to right for that specific frame, you can set the percentage of interpolation that will be reached. For example, if you set 90%, it means that starting from the previous pose, the 90% of the next post will be reached in that frame. Once you are happy with the keyframes, change the timeline to be a graph editor and start rotating and scaling those vectors to get a better result. Basically, choose one of the many transformations that you have done previously and refine it to get a more real interpolation. For example, in this case, I'm making the movement along the z-axis of the global root bone faster during the first frames. Doing so, Phoenix will reach faster the final z location. Repeat the same logic for as many transformations as you need. And doing so you can end up having a really good animation. It only takes time. 
As I told you at the beginning of this video, I think that's impossible to show step by step the entire animation process in one short video. Even if I accelerate 7 times all the recordings I have, it's still gonna end in a more than one hour long video. I think it's boring and probably useless. The only and the most important advice I can give you is to animate, animate and animate. And this is everything for today, we are almost at the end of this journey. In the next video we are gonna talk about lighting the scene and render settings. Thank you for watching, if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe, I hope you will still be part of this journey and in that case, see ya!